Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. This song talks about the fact that love never fails. It's a brilliant song. Come on, let's sing together. And your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. And your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love, yeah. that I face Stronger than the power of the grave Constant in the trial and the change Cause one thing remains One
how wonderful it is to come together and worship together on this Sunday and it is Sunday the 13th of September and a really warm welcome to you wherever you're joining us from this morning for our service. We are St Peter's Church in Yaxley which is just outside Peterborough and I'm Sarah Vicar here of St Peter's. It's really wonderful again on this Sunday to gather together and I hope that you're enjoying the conversation we're able to share, that you're enjoying worshipping together and it's just great that we're going to come together on this platform or through YouTube, however you're watching us today, to worship God, to praise him, to read the Bible, to think about God's word. And today we start a new series. I talked a little bit about it last week, but we're going to be following a book called Simply Church by Sim Dendy, and I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that, uh, and certainly during our talk today, uh, just explaining a little bit more about why I've chosen this book, and what I think we're going to gain from it in this period. So I hope you're really looking forward to this new series. Our notices have been streaming before and after the service, so please do look at those at the end of the service uh, if you want to know what's going on at the moment. I hope that those of you that have gone back to school or work this week have had a really good week uh, and it's just great as we gather here today, so let us pray. Loving God, we love to come and worship you. We love to come together and worship you. And while we can't do that in our church building, we can do that in our homes, we can connect through the internet, we can sing our praise and we can share fellowship and friendship with one another. So Father, bless this time, send your Holy Spirit into our homes, into our lives. Fill us with your love, fill us with your purpose and your peace and send us forward to do your will in this place as the church in Yexley. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we're going to continue in worship this morning and then we'll watch a Bible study video called Eden. For those of you that don't like snakes, you're going to have to just close your eyes part way through. Um, but let's worship together. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and feel the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord your presence There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here 
come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence. Lord, your presence, oh, your presence, Lord, I love your presence, Lord, I love your presence, Lord. Of your presence, Lord. Your presence here. Thank 
Rewind the clock. Stop at the start. There was nothing but darkness. Nothing existed. Nothing was listed, not one book. You couldn't even like something on Facebook until, boom, a voice spoke something out of the nothing, swapping nothing for something as God of creation created, something from nothing. God who? The grafter of galaxies and crafter of creation, who turned on the solar and kicked off the system, who positioned the planets, orchestrated their orbits, who seasoned the sea and laid out the land, who mapped out the mountains and set out the sand, who made birds of the air and fish of the sea, who made mammals and animals, made you and me, pinnacle of what's physical, ever better than the rest, even better than Everest. Grander than the canyon, with more depth than the ocean, formed us from the dust he breathed us into motion. And as the maker strolled through the trees with their luscious leaves, there strolled with him two, Adam and Eve. A two-way relationship of three, in perfect harmony, an ever-flowing fountain of friendship with the ever-knowing, showing one rule, don't eat fruit from that tree. You see, that tree is out of bounds. On what grounds, says this slippery voice, then a choice or a trick, a serpent so slick, why can't you be fruit from that tree? The serpent deceives Adam and Eve. A low hanging fruit crunched, the off limits fruit munched and eaten, and now there's just mess as sin takes its stage in the Garden of Eden. Sin breaks in and it changes everything. Perfection gets pierced, the friendship gets frayed, a rule broken, and now brokenness gets displayed, which makes for newfound open eyes, the sin reality of sadness, pain and lies, and as separation strolls in, it comes as no surprise that Adam and Eve leave the garden with the luscious leaves. And though God, the glorious gardener, is heartbroken from the offset he sets his restoration plan to motion, the irreversible will be reversed, the wreckage rectified, the penalty paid for, dealt with and justified. One day what you've broken, I'll fix and restore, but it won't just be a touch-up job, but perfect, even better than before. One day I'll win you back, one day we'll be together once more. Fast forward to the festive. A messenger surprise. Shepherds in awe and wonder as the angels fill the skies. Mary's explanation of the conception situation that Joseph first off thinks are lies. Gift given astronomers with wisdom in their minds and worship in their hearts and they can't believe their eyes because God's plan right from the start was a baby. And maybe it seems there's nothing stranger, but this baby in a manger was God's son who'd rise up to become our saviour. And what had birthed from a brokenness back when Eden, French and Frayed, was now carried on a cross as the penalty on him was nailed. Creation held its breath and went into mourning. And as morning finished its shift and day turned to noon, the sun turned off its light, sky like night in the afternoon. Death came. 
knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door as God's son breathed his last breath in no more. But there's more to the story because death couldn't hold him. The grave could not control him. Life burst through the tombstone sent rolling because Jesus, the saviour, is in the business of restoring. Payment completed. We can now be forgiven. Our sin curse defeated because he is risen. And so the remit's reclaimed restoration, a new hope and creation with the promise of a new world that's beyond our imagination. And it doesn't need any backing from dragons, Deborah Mead, then it's God's business happening anyway. The promise of perfect Eden, perfectly planted trees, showcasing their luscious leaves, flowers dancing in the sunlight to the beat of the rhythmic breeze. No need for antihistamines, cause these won't make you sneeze. A view that will leave you breathless. The hangy gardens of Babylon won't have a garden patch on this place, but the view is just a warm-up act compared to the main show, the God gardener himself, the maker, the molder, creator, the crafter, who invites us into paradise to play forever after. No more sin, no more pain, no more brokenness, no more shame, no more tears, no more sorrow. That's the perfect Eden promise of tomorrow. Our reading today is taken from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, starting at chapter 2, verse 14. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No. This is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Turning now to verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you to Russ for doing our reading for this morning. And I love this reading from Acts. I love both portions of it. And we're going to think more about this as we go into our time to think about our Bible reading. So let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for the example of people in the Bible, for the way that they lived their lives. And most of all, for the way that Jesus lived his life on earth, for the witness that he gives us to follow. We thank you for these accounts of the early church, 
as we think through what they did, help us to think through what you want us to do today. How you maybe want us to change our emphasis, to move maybe into something new, because we want to follow in your path. So as we open up the Bible today to this passage, just open this up for us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It would be really good if you've got a Bible handy to look at that. If you're on our online church and there's a Bible section on there, you can open up and have that running alongside. Um, so please do feel free to use either, but it'd be great if you had a Bible with you. And so our question today is thinking around why church? You might have some automatic answers to that. You might have positive and negative answers to that, quite frankly. And we're going to go in and think about that again through this book, which I'm going to talk about shortly. But the last about 10 days ago, I was sent this. It's called Now is the Time. And it's the annual report for 2019 for a charity called LifeWords. They are involved in projects in this country and abroad in trying to bring the Bible to people and give them practical support in the places that they're in. I read their report, but I was really taken by the second page of it and the second paragraph. And it says this. Little did we know that as our story of 2019 unfolded, a different global story was about to emerge. We're writing this in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic that has changed all our lives. Sadly, too many have lost loved ones to COVID-19. Our deepest condolences if that is your experience. We wish you God's peace and comfort. So next year's annual review will tell a very different story. One whose ending is still unknown. But we know that God's word will be as constant and sustaining in 2020 as it was through 2019. Now is the time. Now is the day. So let us not weary in doing good. Let's give thanks for God's faithfulness throughout last year, even as we walk the path of this present one. Over the next few weeks, we will need to have our own APCM in church. We need to do this for the end of October. And I wrote the report for us for the last year in April. And we were just sort of in the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. So I wrote maybe looking a little bit forward and a little bit back. But I wonder what our report will say for this year when I write that next year. What will 2020 turn out to be for us as a church? There are so many opportunities. We have an opportunity really like no other in church history because we've had this prolonged period of being out of our church building, out of our normal routines, trying to find other ways to meet and gather and be church. And we need to hold and gather some of that stuff because some of it we need to take into our next chapter of a church, as a church. Some of it we need to leave behind and we're gonna to need to make changes and move forward. There's gonna be an awful lot to think about, which is why I ask you to pray for PCC tomorrow night. Our home groups are gonna be following this series along Simply Church. And I'd love to invite you to be part of a home group if you're not already. We are blessed with eight home groups in our church, not all of which are meeting at the moment, but many of them are in different ways digitally. And over the summer, they've managed some gathering together in smaller groups. If you'd like to belong to a home group, then please come and talk to me and I will tell you the, the people that are leading and the kind of groups that we have at the moment. Again, they're possibly subject to some kind of change. We don't know at the moment as things grow and develop. And some of the groups aren't able to take new members at the moment, but some would love new members. So if you want to be part of a home group, this is a great time to join as we look at this series together. So the book that I showed you last week is called Simply Church and it's by Sim Dendy. Sim Dendy um, I've certainly heard at Spring Harvest and through other mediums and you may well have heard of him or seen him. The front cover of the book says Simply Church 
because it's not meant to be this complicated. And then bits of that title are crossed out and it says simply church. It's not complicated. We can be very good in church at making things more complicated. We have rules and regulations that we have to follow. We have things we have to do. But today our reading takes us back to Acts 2, to that early church, to those first witnesses of Jesus and these new Christians that were trying to form a way of carrying on what Jesus did in their life, in their ministry, in their mission, in the way that they lived. And so the passages that we heard from Acts 2 today are so incredibly powerful. I love the speech that Peter gives. We know Peter has failed so many times, but he stands up and makes his speech. They're words in the book of Joel, and they talk about amazing things that are going to happen um, in the end times, I suppose we would call them today, about signs that are going to happen, things that will happen, the way people will act, and the gifts that will be given. And I think in many ways, we've lost that urgency that that early church had. The early church believed absolutely that Jesus was coming back in their time. They believed they were getting ready to welcome Jesus back. But we're 2000 years later, he's not come back yet. And I think we've lost that urge to be ready, to get ready, to be the church in the best form we can be, to be making disciples, to be missional, to do all those things that we should be doing, that Jesus told us to do and that the early church modelled. And so we've got a chance to take a break. We've had a break really for six months in some ways, but it gives us a pause just to think through how we're doing things and what we're doing before, as I say, we're entering this new season in September. Last week, our reading was from Hebrews 12. And the key thing was about fixing your eyes on Jesus. And that has always got to be our key, looking to who Jesus was, to what he wants us to do, to where he wants us to go. And we have the Holy Spirit with us and in us to empower us today in our ministry and our mission. You may say, well, the Acts 2 church had the example of Jesus. Many of them had known Jesus personally. They'd seen him, they'd witnessed his mission and ministry. But we have their accounts. We have a Bible full of accounts about Jesus, accounts about how our early church first functioned. It's not like we haven't got any guidance to go on of what we should be doing. But as I said, we've lost that expectancy. We've lost that thought that Jesus is coming back in our time. Even with all the things that are going on in the world at the moment, I've had many conversations with people in that, do you think we're now in revelation times? Are we in end times? My answer would be, well, those disciples thought that they were in the end times at that point. So we don't know. But we've got to live as if we are, as if it, life depends on our mission, knowing that everything actually depends on God, not on us. So the first chapter in Sim Dendy's book, it's called, I Love My Church. I know how he feels. I've grown up in the church and I love it. I love the different ways it meets. I love the different forms of church. I grew up in the Methodist church. I've had different ways of being church over the years. Uh, I've been in sort of home group churches. I've been in great warehouses of churches. I've been in denominations of Methodism and Anglicanism. I've been in expressions of Tese, many different things. And I do genuinely love the church. I love the many different expressions of it. But we have to remember that it is God's church. It's not our church. God has given us his church to tend it and care for it, to do what he wants to happen in it and to move forward, to send people out, to receive people in and to continue to make disciples of people everywhere. The church is awesome. Sim Dendi says, the church is the hope of the world. And when it works the ways it's supposed to, the church is unbeatable. A community of Jesus believers who love one another and are committed to sharing a message of hope and transformation 
with a fragmented world. Doesn't that sound amazing? Wouldn't you want to be part of that? But we don't always make it look and sound like that. We don't make it look like something exciting that people want to come to. The amount of conversations over the years I've had with people who have some great ideas about what we do in church, but they're nowhere near anything what we actually do or the way we work and the way we're a fellowship together and how we are a family. But our church, our world, sorry, needs the church. It needs it like never before. It needs the church to be full of hope, to be full of the hope in Jesus Christ. The church is not always what it should be. As I've said already, it can become complicated at times. It can become complex at times. The mystery of Christian faith becomes weird when it's unexplainable. But actually there's something about our faith that should be unexplainable. How can we understand and explain the resurrection? There's a mystery and that is wonder and amazement that we have that mystery. And we need to hold that mystery along with the things that we do know. Denley suggests that the church needs a declutter. It needs a clear out, a detox. We can end up collecting stuff from all over, whether it's, we can do that in our own lives, whether it's books or cars or clothes or shoes or gadgets, whatever your thing is, we can all do it. We can all hoard things and we can all have more things than we need. And sometimes we need to sift through these things. I know a lot of people have done this during lockdown. They've had a look through some of the things that they've got. They've had a look at their time and their priorities. And they've tried to work out what they should be doing. They've tried to reorder things a little bit. It can be really good to strip things back. It can be really healthy to explore our past as we do as we read the Bible. We think about those accounts. But we also need to think about a fresh purpose and a future because God has got a plan for our church, even if it doesn't look anything like it does at the moment. We can think about turning off the computer when it just won't work and you're so frustrated with it. We can turn it off, wait that minute and turn the computer back on again and wait for it to reboot. We have to return to the start again. And so we can go back a couple of millennia. We can discover what the original church looked like, what that first church looked like. And that will help us to remember, but also to reset ourselves. And so we look at the book Simply Church, because we should be Simply Church. We should be this community of believers that come together, that eat together, that worship together, that love being in the company of each other but also inviting new people in. If we think about some of the things from Acts 2, they saw people being baptised constantly. Now we have quite a wait for baptisms at the moment, but that's due to the coronavirus. But we wanna see those new people coming in and being able to send people out to other things where they're being called to. I've seen research in many different ways on why people come to church and what people hope to get out of church. You might be able to think of your own reasons why you come. You might be able to say very quickly, I come because I want to worship God. But we come as well because we're part of something. We come to be, maybe meet friends. We come to be in a different environment to hear the Bible and to think about these things together. There'll be lots of reasons as to why you first started coming to church. And maybe you might want to think, what are your reasons today? Why do you join us online? Why are we looking forward to that time when we go back into church? Because I certainly am. And if we think about Simply Church, there are three circles that Sim Dendi gives us. The what, the how, and the why. The what's quite easy. We know what we do. We know we have a service on Sunday. We know it looks slightly different between our nine o'clock and our 11 o'clock. We have an evening praise service. We have our food bank. We have activities going through the week with things like Sparks, things like Encounter, Mother's Union, 
lots of different things if we were in a normal time we would have running in our church so we know the what we know that people are going and doing mission elsewhere thinking about Suzanne in the schools thinking about some of the other things that people are doing round and about Yaxley so the what we pretty much know the how kind of goes along with it well, we put on groups, we open up the church for a food bank, we invite people to this, we go into places like schools to tell people about God, about his love for them and the amazing story of the Bible. So we kind of know the what and the how. But I don't think we can always articulate the why. Why church? Why do we come to church? Why is church important in our lives, in our community? Why do we need church? If we can answer the why, then the what and the how make sense and bring meaning into what we're doing. And so we need to go backwards into the Bible and look at some of the stories there, as well as thinking about our future and where God is taking us. If we turn back to this passage again from Acts 2, these first disciples were expectant. They were expecting that the signs that Peter spoke about in those words of Joel would come. That in the last days, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, on his sons and his daughters, and they shall prophesy. It's not a might, it's a shall. Young men shall see visions. Old men shall dream dreams. Even upon slaves, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below. There is so much in these few verses alone to be expectant for, in what God will still be doing in the midst of us today. And as we come to the later account that Russ read to us in Acts 2, it talks about how these groups, these early disciples, devoted themselves, the words used, to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to praying. Awe came among them, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had things in common. They would sell their possessions and their goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day they spent much time in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. These are not very many verses, but they tell us a huge amount about the early church. If we think about Jesus' words in Matthew 19, he said, let the little children come to me. Jesus invites people into his presence. He goes to those that can't come to him and he invites the littlest and in that certainly culture of the day, the least important person to come and be with him. Bishop Stephen, our own bishop, has asked us to look at the Beatitudes and we'll be doing that in different ways over the next few weeks. But he asks us to look and think again about the questions of the what and the how and the why using the Beatitudes. And again, our home groups will be doing some of that work. And so you're going to pick up some of that as well. But we're going to stick with these acts, this Acts passage for the moment. So I want us to think about our mission statement. And our mission statement is this. We are an open, contemporary evangelical church devoted to loving God and our community. Our aim is to reach out in love and faith into the communities in which we live, work and play. Our desire is to see God's love transform lives so that all in the Yaxley area would come to believe, trust and hope in Jesus Christ. That is a great mission statement and it covers perhaps a lot of what Acts 2 brings into this. We've got an opportunity to think about this mission statement as well. To think about, is this still our mission statement? 
Is there anything we want to add or take away? Or is this where we are heading? Because we get our vision right, we know where we're going at that point. And so within that, we have a vision which is slightly separate. And the vision says we believe God's message is more relevant for our lives today. We therefore have a strong emphasis on connecting with God through the Holy Spirit, looking not only to read and dwell on his word, but also engage with him on a daily basis. That's why our vision is to be a vibrant and welcoming church at the heart of the community, reaching out in love and faith. To enable individuals to deepen their relationship with Jesus and to live for him. To engage in inclusive spirit-led worship of the living God. To provide an inspiring and stimulating ministry through which our children and young people encounter Jesus for themselves. We also believe that every member of the church has a role to play, no matter how big or small. That's why we personally invite you to become part of working towards our vision. These are all things that the church has written. They're things that you'll find on our website. There are things that I read in the profile when I looked at coming here. And so we need to think about, are these still what we're working towards? If we're working towards them, are we on the right path to work towards them? We are in a different time. We can't engage physically person to person with people. And so are we able to do this online? I think we're having a good go, uh, but it's not as easy in this environment as it would be if we were in the church and we could gather and talk to each other and have the groups that we have where we can read the, read the gospel, read, read the Bible, and sing together and worship together. But we also have to think about how we achieve this in this season. In Sim Dendy's book, he gives 10 hallmarks of a church. He talks about preaching up a storm. He talks about fellowship, food, prayer, awe, signs and wonders, being better together, sharing the wealth, living generously, worship, and home is where the heart is. On these hallmarks, then a fully detoxed, simply defined, authentic church based on the original model, the model from Acts 2 that we've been talking about this morning, should be a community of people who love the Bible and teach it well, who make the most of opportunities to spend time with each other, who enjoy sharing communion and eating together with a sense of fun, who understand the power of prayer and can't help but do it all the time who work in partnership with the Holy Spirit as an everyday activity, who look for ways to get together in a large crowd and celebrate. Do not do that one at the moment, please. To hold things lightly and share what they have. To give generously, not afraid by the first round of drinks. Again, perhaps not at the moment. To love worshipping and praising their creator God open up homes to each other, always having room for one more. Okay, so there are several of those last few that we cannot do at the moment in the form that perhaps it's written there. But what I love is people are being creative. People have split into groups over the summer so that smaller groups can meet in gardens. That people are trying their best to do these things in different ways. But we have to keep working towards them. The four things that I was given when I came here a year ago in the vision that I was given were encouragement, worship, welcome and prayer. These four things are all still relevant today, but a lot has happened in the last year. Things that move us forward in some ways, things that move us backwards in others, um, things that we hadn't expected that we've had to take on board. So we have to go back to the start, but focus on where we are today. It's probable now that these four things are not our main focus going forward, and we need to reevaluate that and think about where we are going. But most importantly, we've got to think about where God wants us to go. 
what he wants us to do, who he wants us to be in this community as we reach out in faith and love. How we use the gifts and the skills that people bring because we have so many in our church and we're not using all of them so well necessarily. We want to use everybody's gift to the total that they have been given because they've been given for the use of the community, for the church and for our community of Yaxley. So does all this sound easy? No. <laughs> you read Acts 2 and you think, okay, that sounds lovely. We'll meet every day and we'll break bread and we'll talk and we'll sing and we'll worship. But things are constantly changing. These six months have seen changes that we couldn't even have planned at the start of this year. That annual report from LifeWords, when they started writing that and thinking, things were very different at that point. If we think about some of the places where people have had to change and adapt, which we thought about a bit last week. Sim gives the example of Blockbuster Video. Many of you will remember these, it used to be everywhere. You go and get your video and then you go and get your DVD. And in 1991, they were worth $8.4 billion. But by 20, 2010, they were losing a billion pounds a year because no one wanted DVDs anymore. The story with Kodak is quite similar. They didn't change and adapt to the digital forms of photographs and media that were coming out. And so things became very difficult for them. But we have our constants in this. If we turn in our Bibles to Matthew 28, you will know the commission, the great commission that Jesus gave his disciples. And he told them to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. That commission doesn't change. The church is not just for those inside. In fact, it predominantly shouldn't be for those inside. It should be for those that don't know God yet. For those that we want to draw into our church family, who will then become people that reach other people. That's what we have to do. So we thought about the how and the why, perhaps. The how and the what, sorry. The Great Commission is our what do we do? That tells us, and in some way it's our how as well. Our how do we do it? We go out and we talk to people about Jesus. We draw them in to things that are going on. We make our activities relevant for what is needed in the community so that we are showing love and faith here. But the why again can always be a little bit more difficult. A why are we church? Why do we do what we do? And so then we need to turn back to our Bibles again, strangely enough. I need to turn to John 3.16 and many of you will know this verse which says for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. The answer to the why is love. It's God's love. God shows his love for us through Jesus coming to earth, through dying on a cross, through his death and resurrection. And we are now asked to show that love to those in our church family and beyond. God's love kept Jesus on the cross. We do church because we want to express God's love to a hurting world. We do church because we want to come and praise an almighty God. We run community projects because of God's love. We write songs and books because of God's love. It's why we do what we do. We live in a broken world, surrounded by people who are struggling with finances, work, relationships, education, addiction. And we have the answer to those needs. There are thousands of people within our reach who don't know that Jesus loves them. They don't know that there's a God who has a plan for them and their lives. We have one to 200 people in our church 
And we all still need to know and hear this frequently because we forget, because we're human and we feel that we're not loved, we're not lovable. But actually the Bible's message is one of absolute love. But we also have 10,000 people in our community of Yaxley. In this village alone, we have a huge number of people that we want to reach out to. This is a journey, like I said last week about a marathon. I couldn't have done all those long charity walks without doing the training and the preparation. And we need to do all of those in our church. Our training and our preparation is about continuing to worship together however we can do that at this time. It's about reaching out to people in ways that we can. We've got Food Bank doing that at the moment. Our schools work will continue to reach out to people in different ways. But it is a journey. We're not going to get to the destination. The destination might keep moving. But we have to keep praying. We have to keep worshipping. We have to keep reading our Bibles. We have to keep being in fellowship with one another. Because all of these things are so important. As I said last week, fixing our eyes on Jesus is the most important thing that we can do. We can get sucked into church business very easily. I've got enough rule books on my shelves to tell me that. But it was never about an organisation. The church was and is for normal everyday people. That's why Christ died. And God's love is why we keep telling the story because we want to tell it so that more people hear and that we draw people into that story, the amazing story that we are still part of today. So we're gonna spend quite a few more weeks looking at this book and opening it up and thinking about it in our context. Our home groups are gonna be adding to things as they look at things in smaller groups. And again, I invite you to come and talk to me about the home groups. I'd love to have more people in home groups. They're such an amazing resource uh, of smaller groups gathering together and getting to know one another, reading the Bible together, caring for each other and praying for one another. So we're going to continue in worship. And I invite you just to open yourselves up to the Holy Spirit. Just say, come Holy Spirit in this place. And if you feel there's a message for you or for us as a church, then do share that if you feel able to, because we expect and believe that the Holy Spirit will work in our lives through our worship as we come and praise God. And so let's continue in worship. Over the mountains and the sea your river runs with love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing Of when your love came down I could sing of your love forever 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 Over the mountains and the sea Your river runs with love for me And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing Of when your love came down I could sing of your love forever 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 Oh, I feel like dancing It's foolishness, I know But when the world has seen the light 
They will dance with joy like we're dancing now. Dancing late like we're dancing now. They will dance with joy like we're dancing now. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing your love forever I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love Love of God, oh, it 
chases me down, fights till I find leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love. No shadow you want light up, mountain you want climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you want light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I find, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. As we enter prayer now, we are reminded of the words of Psalm 33. The word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. Lord, we acknowledge that you are the why we do church. It is because of your unconditional, undeserved, endless love for us. So we praise you, we thank you, and we humbly bow before you. Lord, we thank you for your church. We may not be inside the building we call church, but we are the church, your people. As we struggle with not being able to physically meet together, remind us that nothing can stop us being your church wherever we are. In this time of being outside the building, challenge us as to what needs to be stripped away and what needs to be built up. Forgive us where we have made things too complicated. Remind us we are followers of Jesus not of rules and religion. Give us a new vision of what St Peter's might look like. Make us a people who are hungry for your word, who pray earnestly, who experience the power of the Holy Spirit, who care for one another, who are known for their generosity and hospitality. Make us the kind of community that others are attracted to, because in it they see Jesus. We long to see lives and communities transformed with God's love. We pray this over our community in Yaxley. 
Help us to show your love simply because you first loved us. We stand in the breach and pray for those who are researching and trialling a vaccine for COVID-19. That you will use their intellect and learning to guide them towards success. We thank you for those willing participants in the trials and pray that you would keep them from harm. As the schools have returned this week, we ask for protection over the children and particularly the teachers. Despite a very new learning environment, may children be able to pick up learning quickly and not be disadvantaged by the delays in their education. We pray for those who may be coming to the end of furlough and are anxious about losing their jobs or have done so already. Show us ways as your church that we can help. We pray for St Peter's in Cabahiri. Thank you for the provision they have received during the pandemic. Thank you for all they have to teach us about praising you whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. May the new nursery school be a blessing to the community in many different ways. Thank you too for the work of Mission Possible. And as one person described, the treasure they have brought to so many. We pray for Richard and the trustees that they may have wisdom in discerning priorities for the many projects that have been requested. We pray for our church family, for those who may be feeling weak and need healing, those who are feeling down and may need encouragement and motivation, and for those who are celebrating. We think of Marilyn and Mick as they marry on Saturday. Thank you for bringing them together May their wedding day overflow with love, joy and peace. And may that spread not only amongst those present, but even more to those who can't be present in person. For we know nothing can restrict your Holy Spirit. As their church family, we bless them as they start their new life together. Would you pour over them your love and goodness? Lord, we ask you to give us a new imagination. Revive our creativity. Spark in us new possibilities and help us to conceive new ideas. May we not give up this marathon, but give us the strength to endure. Most importantly, keep us focused on Jesus and may all we do bring glory to the Father. We pray in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. It's so wonderful to pray together, to bring our concerns for our world, for ourselves, for our church, for our community to God, and just gather those in prayer. And we'll be meeting tomorrow morning, which is Monday. We meet always on a Monday morning to pray together as a group. You're welcome to join us. We meet at 7.30 in the morning uh, so people can go off and do other things. And if there are things you want to feed into that for prayer, then please let us know. 
On the subject of prayer, please pray tomorrow evening again on Monday evening for our PCC. You will be aware there's a lot that we need to discuss, some really big issues that we need to be talking about. And so please pray for us as we come to meet and maybe during the meeting for us that we will make good and godly and wise decisions tomorrow. Um, and we will be feeding back all of the things after the PCC. Whatever you're doing this week, I hope that you have a great week. Maybe it's going back to a similar routine. Perhaps it's still lots of change for you. But whatever you do, I pray that you'll be blessed in this week. And so let's bring today and let's bring this coming week to God as we pray. Loving God, as we go into another week, we give thanks that you have gone into this week before us, that you walk through this week with us. And for whatever we may face, you are there in the midst with us. As we thought about this book today, as we thought about some of the Bible passages, we thought about why church? And we give thanks for our church of St Peter's and for our church family. We pray for each person today and ask for your blessing on them. And we ask that you'll be with us in our homes, in our work, in our school, in our play, in this coming week. And may we just keep turning to you again and again, bringing our day's concerns to you, bringing our joys and our sorrows, and that you are with them through each one of us. And so I pray God's blessing on you today and every day. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we're going to finish with another worship song this morning. So let's continue in praising our God. Finish that. 